The Summon Knight series is always one I've been quite interested in, and have been disappointed that we never got any of the games from the series. Well, we got a couple spin-offs, and we got Summon Knight 5, but I've been kinda holding out hoping that the original would get translated, official or fan. This hasn't shown any signs of happening, so I've decided, screw it. I'm gonna jump in with the release of Summon Knight 6. Should be fine. Turns out, wasn't fine. The story of Summon Knight 6 takes place in Fallujah, where you follow the game's protagonists, Raj and Amu, who have been living alone for their entire lives, unaware of even each other. They've survived all their life off of the things that fall from the sky. Food, supplies, everything. But one day, people start falling from the sky. And these people are, uh, important characters from the previous five Summon Knight games? And that's when we get into the first big problem of this game. We never got 1 through 4, nor all of the spin-offs for that matter. It's not just a couple of characters, tons keep falling from the sky, all from previous games, and the story revolves around how did they get here and how do we return them to their home. They're all likable and interesting in their own ways, but a lot of their interactions seem to boil down to Hey, remember that one time in that previous game we did a thing? Making it difficult to follow along for someone like me who has never played any of the other games. It's apparent this game was made for fans of the series, as it just oozes with this sort of fan service. But this is not advertised as a spin-off game, it's Summon Night 6. It should be part of the main line. And I don't know how the West could appreciate the fan service in this game when we never got to meet any of these characters or understand what they're referring to. The entire story bounces around between finding more people who fell into Fallujah, finding a way home, and squabbles between characters due to conflicts that are not explained in this game because they've already been explained in previous games. But oh man, this week's conflict between characters is due to Summon Knight 1's demon lord rampaging about whose drives and motivations are established in that game. So instead, let's just make him cackle maniacally and say he's going to kill us all with no explanation, because you should have played that. Really, everything is just so cheesy and ham-fisted. And if I had to be perfectly honest, I don't think having context of these characters would entirely save the story either. I don't really want to spoil the ending on why, but your quest to save everyone and send them home doesn't end as epic or interesting as it should, regardless of what ending you get, which there are a good handful of. A lot of that story time is spent developing these characters instead, heavily relying on its fan service. And that's fine, I just don't know how I'm supposed to relate. I don't know how anybody is supposed to relate as an English speaker. Now, I've been restraining myself to not bring up one of the game's biggest problems, as it affects the entire experience. The voice acting is terrible. Like, legendary status terrible. Something I thought we left behind in the PS1 and Sega CD era. Unbelievable. That can't be. Yahoo! I mean, it's not normal no matter how you look at it. It's just not right. Wait. Oh no. Amr! We lost her! She was with us before this happened. I remember it clearly. Oh, if we've managed to lose Big Sister, I don't know what I'll do. This predicament is a huge blow to my human emotions. Holy crap, I smell mustard lol ja 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 Sometimes recording environments don't even sound consistently the same. Having dialogue between characters sound just different. Like one of them was literally phoned in. You really like stargazing, don't you? Can you blame me? Look at all that up there. There's even instances where voice actors seem to read their onomatopoeias as their spell, making for some hilarious sentences. Yes, yes, exactly like that, exactly as the words appear on the screen. Good take. It's just hot garbage. I found myself actually laughing out loud at serious or tense moments, and it made it hard to keep a grounded opinion of these characters when I had the voices to shape my opinion of them. 
Then we've got the gameplay, which is actually rather deep and interesting, but ultimately felt too confusing and too exploitable. Summon Knight 6 is a tactical role-playing game where your units battle against other units, moving across the board in turn-based combat. You've got your typical attacking, items, the like. Then there's spells which you can use alone or use in pairs to get more powerful versions of it. But I pretty much cleared this entire game abusing counter-attacking and burst summons. You see, magic is finite, but smacking them with your sword isn't. And why bother having a squishy caster out there when you can just set your units to counter-attack and counter-bash them in the face over and over? Well, I did have a couple of casters, but all I used them for were to spam burst summons, which are large AoE summons that often deal a ton of damage and require two units to cast. So I just blow away a platoon of units, dash in there with my counter attackers, smack things, clear the map, and that's all I did from beginning to end. I even killed the final boss of the game this way. Didn't really bother with all those neat, interesting level-up skills you can use, or stances you can use other than counter-attack, or these buff spells, or these weapon enchantments to get some sort of effects. They apparently even have some sort of strength and weakness system with types such as Ogre, Yokai, Machine, and I think others? I'm not sure, I can't remember. I never bothered to learn any of it, because everything died if you just hit it with a big enough burst summon, or hit it with your sword. So the depth was here, it's just as soon as I found something that worked, it didn't feel interesting or fun to look into it. So I just didn't care. And it's really early you don't have to care, because the game showers you with so many units that you can build whatever you want. But elevated scary wood creature, you might say. What about leveling them up, huh? Hey, don't you worry about that. Experience is like a currency. You collect it, and then you give it to the characters you want to level up, regardless of their performance. So if you get a character that's kind of behind that you decide you want to use, or you just want to level a few characters out of their minds, nothing's stopping you from doing that. And as cool as it is to allow fans of the series to catch up their favorite characters so they can incorporate them into their core party as soon as possible, it also serves to break the game really easily. That's just one aspect of combat I wasn't a fan of. There's also the amount of time you spend walking from one side of the map to the other. There's just so much damn walking and I hate it. Some maps will have you clear a couple of enemies nearby just to have the rest of them be like 15 cells away. Have fun moving all 8 of your units, 3 cells at a time, turn by turn, just to get to them. I've used the auto battle function this game provides multiple times just to expedite this. But don't think you can just leave it on and it'll play the game for you. Oh no, because the AI for auto battle is awful. I hate that Summon Knight 6's combat system bugs me this much, because there's tons of interesting ideas here, and I don't dislike tactical RPGs at all. There's a handful of side activities to be had within the game as well, but most of them link into the problems I've already touched on. All characters have an affinity system, and at the end of some chapters you can chat with the character of your choice to build this affinity and learn a little bit more about them. A neat system to be sure, but I always felt like it was a little too shallow. Because a lot of these characters are from series that already are established, so these moments feel like they simply serve to give more background to these characters. I mean, that's nice and all, but there's never really any sort of build-up to a lasting friendship or romance between the characters. Anything like that is already established in their respective games. You're not going to break the marriage of Amr and Magna just because you got one of their affinities to Max, so don't expect anything even as deep as Fire Emblem's relationship system here. There's also fishing, which amounts to a button mashing minigame. It's a fun distraction for a few minutes, but once it got boring I saw no reason to keep pulling fish out of the water. They're just new ingredients for cooking, and I had all the healing items I could ever need just from playing the game. All this leaves me with is... who's this game for? 
It's not like there isn't any fun to be had here. The value proposition certainly is strong, taking me about 40 hours to be satisfied with my playthrough, despite there being multiple endings to collect that I didn't. Characters are quite fun and interesting, and the combat system has a good amount of depth, despite its flaws. I just think you need to be an SRPG maniac who loves bad anime-style cheesiness, driven home by even worse voice acting to really appreciate this game. Or you can be a longtime fan of the Summon Knight series, and would just be content seeing all of your favorite characters come together and interact, as a lot of the decisions made in this game seem to be for fan service. And by longtime fan, I don't mean somebody who's just played the handheld spin-offs. I still would love to be a fan of this series and give it another try, if only because Summon Knight 6 did one thing very well. It did a good job of making every other Summon Knight game look really cool. The whole time I felt like I was drudging through a fanfiction with absolutely no knowledge of the original material. It was just so awkward and clumsy, but it kept hinting at something that sounded so much cooler that I would rather be playing. I do own Summon Knight 5, and maybe I'll get to this one sometime as it's the only other main Summon Knight game we have here in the West. Yeah.